Let's do our top 10 things in culture of 2023. And it can be TV, movies, songs, art, concerts, sporting events, just like things in pop culture, your top 10. Um, okay. how should, Are we going one by one? Yeah. Should we all ask. go like 10, 9? Mine aren't, mine aren't ordered by like by preference, just so you know. Oh, I did mine top 10. That's fine. All right. Mine was the Donkey Gollum game walkthrough. Ladies and gentlemen, I have played the Smeagol game, and I am still alive to talk about how stupid it is. Going from Zelda into the... <laughs> yeah, I just love special it video. so much. He like really illustrates like... Gollum's just like a slave in Mordor, and it's like, what kid doesn't want to play as a slave? <laughs> <And> like, <Yeah. laughs> just how depressing of a game it is. <laughs> All right, my, uh, you know, I'll try and do like ten to one, but just take it with a grain of salt with my list, okay? Uh, ten, I put shows about cults. So just recently, there was a bunch of really good documentaries about cults. One, a couple about the Twin Flames universe, which was like this really toxic dude and his wife who started this cult that's all about like finding your twin flame and they convince people to like change their gender identity and a bunch of other things uh, hmm. to try and find their twin flame. And it's really this dude like is one of the most punchable people I've ever seen in my entire life. And the documentary is really good. He took my child. He twisted her memories, her mind haven't seen her in over three years and then there's another one about the love has one cult which is this woman who convinced all her followers that she was like mother god and she started taking this silver supplement that turned her skin blue and it's just like wild and it was produced by the safty brothers or at least benny safty one of them so it's really it was a really well-made documentary and i loved it so well, just recently shows about cults pick one you got to pick one dude this is top no, i'm 10. just saying shows about cults okay, okay. you you That's lose at this Wes's yeah. number 10 is cults cults yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> indianapolis okay. cults got it <laughs> okay so mine is um i try to pick one thing from every subcategory that i was touched Wait, by this i need year. to interrupt you really quick go for it the first time ever that I add on like an extra thing yeah. to my answer <laughs> and you get mad at me, like every single time Jeff answers, he has like yeah, four well, backups to his answer. Hey, you had, and I you get had called two out for facts. It. We didn't call you out. All right. It's a matter fine. of expectations. You know, Jeff okay. broke down that wall long ago. My yeah, thing is fine. I just don't react when you guys get mad at me for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll try and be more chill. Okay. So this That's is my, my this is my science pop culture pick, uh, the James Webb Telescope. I've just been in love with it ever since it oh, deployed. Yeah. Great pick. And mm. in 2023, it discovered like a relatively like in quotes close exoplanet with Earth like atmospheric elements. Exoplanet K218b. It just makes me excited for the future, thinking that like maybe there is some slight possibility of interstellar travel and inhabiting new planets and stuff. I just thought that was really Let fun. Let me ask, what's your favorite planet? Well, I, I don't have a favorite. Uh, I find them all fascinating. They're all part of a... Mine's the sun! Yeah, nice. I like that. All right, number nine for me is Godzilla minus one. talked about that a bit i really loved like the opening scene with godzilla where he's chomping people and just tossing them so yeah. that's my number nine uh my number nine i'm gonna go with the show killing it it's the show that stars craig robinson you know craig from like the office and uh who is he in the office he's the black guy he's like the big black oh, guy that yeah. works in the mail room and stuff so it stars craig robinson and claudia or claudia or doherty um, she's like an Australian actress. Actress, I'm sure you'll recognize her from a few different things. She's really, really funny. It's about this um, kind of down on their luck. These two people that meet each other because they're killing pythons in the Everglades, and that's how they're trying to make money. Okay. And it just is really funny and and goes kind of off the rails from there. Doing the right thing is never a mistake. I believe in karma. What about Nemo's mom and finding Nemo? You think she got what was coming to her? We don't know what Nemo's mom did before the movie started. We don't know how she was. It's really good. I loved it. So Killing It is on my top 10. My next one is going to be, this is my movie selection of the year. This one's a little bit cheating, 
but the Talking Heads concert movie Stop Making Sense re-released in theaters for like a very limited amount of time. So I went and saw it in IMAX. I was the only one in the theater hall. And uh, it was great. I almost got up and started dancing by myself, but I didn't. It's close. <laughs> You're the only one in an IMAX? Yeah, it was amazing. I've never experienced that. I loved That's it. That's crazy. Best um, concert video ever. Concert film. Uh, my number eight is going to be, I went to a UFC fight in Salt Lake. It was poor year versus uh, Gaethy 2. But I really like this Brazilian guy named Pereira, who's like new in the UFC, and I was able to see him. And then that Derek Lewis guy fought, and he was crazy. And it's just like such an insane atmosphere of just like every single person there had that same half mullet haircut <laughs> and like yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> arm sleeve tattoos, you know? And yeah. like everyone just had like such a like bro energy, but it was like still very is just such an electric feeling and like is really bizarre just when someone would get kicked in the head and knocked unconscious and your immediate reaction is just to like start screaming, cheering. Yeah. Like is bizarre, but it was it was KG fun. KG fans being heard from now about a minute gone by round two. Oh! Did you feel like getting in a fight after you left? You get caught up in the energy. I get that yeah. a bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, this guy shoulders <laughs> me, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> Not All that right, guy, though. my turn? If they have cauliflower year, I'm, I'm, no, that's I'll the, just let them do whatever fight, they want. Yeah. <laughs> that's the red flag. <laughs> All right, my next one was Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I am not one to like... I've honestly, I'm so tired of Marvel. I'm really tired of superhero movies in general. I've like tried to rewatch some of the old ones even recently, and I just haven't been into them. You were pretty but, tired of Chris Pratt too. Yeah, I was really tired of Chris Pratt. But man, I loved that movie. Like I just yeah. had such a fun time with it, and I'd been away from my dog for like a week or two, and it made me miss my dog so much. It made me really emotional about my dog. And I just, yeah, I just loved it. I had the best time with it. I think it's my favorite Marvel movie ever. So I. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think yeah, so. It's like the only movie I rewatched in theaters in a long time. Yeah. I rewatched it with Jesse and, and afterwards she was just like, that was a perfect movie. It's just yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. That's my number seven too. So we can just, I'll just join in with you there. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I loved it. So my next, this is my sports choice. Uh, It's the Nuggets. This one's kind of low. It would be higher, if not for one thing. The Nuggets won the NBA championship this year. (laughs) You love Jokic. (laughs) I was so excited. Jokic has been my favorite player to watch the past few years. But what soured the whole thing for it was I genuinely felt like I was more excited about it than Jokic was when they won the whole thing. I was like jumping around (laughs) my living room and stuff. And he just wanted to go home. It's there's this it's hard to be so like, excited for someone like that. Spraying you know? champagne and all of his teammates are like going crazy, and he just like does like one tiny yeah. little like, like gives like, up. It like hardly <laughs> yeah. hits his shoes. <laughs> uh, come on, Jokic! That's I know crazy. he enjoyed it, but it just yeah, it was a little it's, bit of a that's really funny wet blanket. I like yeah. all the memes just with him talking about how the NBA is just like a job to him. And I know his job. <laughs> yeah. When is parade? Thursday. No. I need to go home. Have a- <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, go ahead and give your next ones because I mine was Guardians. Go West. Okay. Uh, my next one, I will say, let's see. I'm going to go with the show Beef on Netflix hmm. um, with, uh, what's his face? Ashton uh, Glenn. Kusher. No, Glenn <laughs> from, um, from, from Walking Dead. Yeah, he's his Howerton. Uh, no, what's his name? Yeah, uh, shoot. Glenn uh, Stephen Gary, Yoon. Glenn Ross. Stephen Yoon and Ali Wong are the two leads in that show. And it's just about like this kind of rivalry beef that starts between these two strangers and it spirals out of control. And then it ends up having uh, like a really poignant couple last episodes that I thought were really beautiful. So um, that's that's my pick. You started this. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, you're the one who backed into me like a psycho. You're the one that flipped me off all roided out and sh- Hey! Are you guys leaving or are you just gonna sit there? What'd you say? What'd you say? Say it again! 
I dare you to say it again. The guy who wrote it, I listened to him on a podcast and he said he just like got mad in LA traffic and followed someone for like an hour. And then really? that's where he came up with the idea. Yeah. Yeah. What it starts heck? with road rage, which <laughs> yeah. is, I love a show that involves road rage. That was not my number six, Unhinged. right? Unhinged. Yeah. Uh, I think that's seven. Oh, okay. We're on seven, right? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so one of my favorite long running mangas came to an end this year is Insomniacs After School. It's about two kids. Not Attack on Titan. No, nah, didn't quite. I haven't, I haven't watched the finale yet. I've heard great things. I just, mm. I need to get around to it. But uh, Insomniacs is about two kids that are insomniacs and they having a hard time at school and Probably they bond over a common affliction. And it's just like a really beautiful, awesome vibe of a story. The ending was a little confusing, but the author has come out and kind of clarified, to me at least, that things ended the way that I interpreted them to have ended. So I'm pretty happy with it. Just a beautiful story. My number six is me and Mike went to a Muse concert together. Oh, it was so sweet. It was really cool. And it had an awesome backdrop. And, you know, I might have tripped even a little bit. So I, lo- right. I liked it. <laughs> uh, my six was the movie Fair Play which I got to see it at the Sundance uh, Film I Festival. I see that. It's really good. It's super intense. It's about like a pair of, like a couple where the woman ends up getting a promotion that the man thought he was going to get and kind of the stuff that happens to the relationship afterwards. That's not how it's supposed to happen. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> uh, anyways, he's getting, he's he getting into the role of the guy. That's Jeff is saying. definitely joking there. Uh, but the, the movie's like really intense and crazy. And I just, I just felt like I was on a roller coaster the whole time, and I loved it. So who was it? Play. It was two actors I really like. Who were who were they? Yeah, it's um, shoot, yeah, I knew you were gonna ask me this. Uh, Al or Alden Ehrenreich. That's right, Alden. The guy Ehrenreich. that plays Solo, Solo. Yeah. and then Phoebe Denver, who she's in like um that Outlander show, I think, or no, she was in Bridgerton. Okay, um, they're both great in it, like so good. So I have to check I definitely it out. Recommend it. Mike, what's next for you? Okay, what's next for me. CX? One Piece is a category unto itself. <laughs> There's always going to be a spot. And I actually kind of had a hard time picking just one. But I determined that Luffy go in Gear 5, pretty recent event. Mm. Just Don't like as a 35-year-old dude, it's just really fun for me to like still be able to get super excited about like literally the most cartoony thing to happen in cartoons in recent memory. Yeah. And I just like the animation was really cool. The storytelling I thought was perfect. Like everything made sense to me and I loved it. It was really, really exciting moment. Cool. That's a good one. Okay. So to number five, mind VR mini golf. I love uh, VR mini golf. Uh, that so you've been, been playing list. a lot of VR mini golf and Walk I really like it. Golf. It feels like you can fly through the levels. It's just been really fun. So it's yeah. so fun. Yeah. Better than real pick. mini golf. I'm mean, I'll, I'll die on that. Honestly, hill. it's right up there. You can't <laughs> fly in real mini golf. The physics are like just as good and it's fun because we just talk to each other while we play. It's very social. I love We it. did like a tooth and claw meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how all of our meetings are going to be from now on. Yeah, instead of mini like going golf. out to lunch and meeting over drinks, we're just in VR playing mini golf. <laughs> that's great. Jesse's just staring at me with contempt while I'm playing, <laughs> thinking like, yeah, well, "Why did I do this?" No, right. dude, nothing looks cooler than a dude with VR goggles on. <laughs> yeah, it's cyberpunk, just so cool, swinging around. All right, my number five pick is Blue Eyed Samurai, a show that Jeff recommended to me on Netflix. Um, Really cool animation, like an adult animated show, which I love. I'm glad you liked it that much. Yeah, really violent, really fun, and I just... Some nudity. Yeah, some nudity. The first season just left me wanting more, so that's going to be my pick. Yeah, I have that as my four. I'm also going with an animated show as my next selection. It's The Apothecary Diaries. Mao Mao, the main character, she's my favorite fictional character of the year. I thought she was just like such a joy and breath of fresh air as far as characters go. 
Um, she gets abducted from, well, we don't need to get into, she gets abducted to go and live in the pal, like a, a royal palace. And she is kind of the commoner, but she's pulling her weight. She's super street smart and um, just makes all kinds of fun little relationships and discoveries and stuff. It's just a great show. Okay. Yeah. Mine was, my next one was Blue Eyed Samurai is like, oh, this guy's pretty hot. And then I was like, oh, it's sweet. It's a girl, actually. <laughs> She's pretty hot. And then cool. there's like some awesome, I just loved like Japan samurai stuff so much. Like one of my favorite video games ever was Ghost of Tsushima. So I just love being in that world. It made me a monster. You have murder in your eyes. He deserves to die. The samurai. To Go US. With. All right. So number four for me, I went to the Death Cab Postal Service reunion show. Oh, yeah. I went to the one in wow. Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> I went to the one in Vegas with a bunch of my friends and just had the best time. Like I felt just all sorts of crazy nostalgia. They sounded so good, both bands. Jenny Lewis joined the Postal Service part. So it was just like a 10 out of 10 concert for me. And uh, yeah, just loved it. So that was my number four pick. All right, number four for me. This is a uh, my favorite YouTube video of the year. I've been really getting really into long form video essays. And it was by a guy named Jacob uh, Geller. And it was called The False Evolution of Execution Methods. And it really stuck with me because it was all about how a lot of these methods to put people to death have been thought, been conceived of as humane. But in reality, the statistics bear out that a lot of times they fail. A lot of times they don't go as quickly or as smoothly as you'd hope they would. And Green that's mile. Just, yeah. And it's just like they one of my... get the sponge wet. Sponge is dry. Like how, how bad would it suck to be executed and instead of, you know, the electric chair just like zapping you to death immediately, it just like you were in a chair you for told 10 me minutes. About that. The f- like one of the first ones is just like went so bad. Yeah. Ugh, I hate just, that. It stuck yeah. with me for so long and um, just a really well researched and delivered Gotta video. Gotta go back to just having elephants stand on people's heads. Seriously, I might I might choose that if I it, something in the video. Actually, one of the most recent death penalties was carried out that was carried out in Utah. The guy selected a firing squad because he yeah. heard about that. He had read all those like statistics. Their last one ever. Yeah. And he was like, I'd rather get shot. It sounds like a much more a surefire way to die <laughs> rather yeah. than some of these other methods that aren't proven to work all the time. Yeah. All right. My next one involves a lot of death. Uh, Oppenheimer. So I just think, I don't know. I think it's one of the more important movies I've seen in a long time because I just don't really consider nuclear warheads and atom bombs very often. And it kind of forced me to, and it's just crazy that our best scientists ever just kind of like put their intelligence into forming bombs that could destroy the whole planet. I know. And now like you're not a powerful country unless you have a bomb that could just kill everyone and it's just it's right. weird. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. And the world is not prepared. It's crazy that we dropped him. Like that's the thing to me. Yeah. It's crazy that like there was people that were like, no, let's drop them. You know, yeah. like the the, yeah. the president was just like, let's do it. Like, yeah, it's just wild. It's, I mean, it's and that's how we it's made Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Godzilla. Now, how are we going to stop him? You can't use a nuke because he's made of nukes. That's true. You know, he's Godzilla was like, King, you need King Kong. Godzilla was like the he one. Can't even do it good thing to come from nukes and then for a long time like his movies weren't even good so it's like nothing good happened because of nukes you know yeah all right my next pick uh number three was the final season of succession i know that's kind of a cheat because it's not like something new in 2023 next one yeah but it did come out in 2023 that show just like been a long time since there was a show that i looked forward to that much when it would come out with new seasons and new episodes and i just think 
I think it comes about as close as any show as just being a perfect run from start to finish. Like every episode was just expertly crafted and made and acted and everything. So I uh, love the way it ended. Just loved everything about the final season. So the final season of, Suc- of Succession is my number three. I'm going to build something bigger, faster, wilder. I want to kill the opposition. Cut their throats. We are pirates! My number three is my favorite book of the year, and that goes to Will of the Many by James Islington. He's an Aussie author uh, inspired by some of my favorite authors, and he um, he created, you know that, remember that meme it was like, how often do you think about the Roman Empire that was going around yeah, earlier yeah. this year? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about yeah. it pretty much all day long for about a week stretch there, because he made this really cool blend of like academia student life with a mix of Roman culture and like a really cool weird magic system this is great just a follow up to his Lycanius trilogy I think he's about to write one of the modern classics of fantasy cool yeah my number two was succession final season I'm a con head you know I wish he would have been president (laughs) (laughs) all right so my number two is the show the curse uh, which Ooh, is directed and produced it. by Nathan Fielder and Benny Safdie. A show hasn't grabbed me this hard in a long time. And I, I'm going to put like a pin in this one because I will say it hasn't ended. And I do think this is a show where the end is really going to affect how I feel about it. Mm. But it's just this slow burn, like watching two of the most abhorrent people, but still somewhat kind of like relatable as they just like do the worst shit and like put their feet, their feet in their mouth. And it's just, I don't know. I just, I just think it's so well done and made and acted. And- Let me go get changed. And- what is that? That's nothing. This is, you don't need to see this. Why did you snatch back the money? Why didn't you just give her the hundred? I was going to buy six of them for $20. I curse you. What did she say? I just can't wait to see what happens. So I, I, that's my number two, the curse. Starring Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone. Yeah. And ben one Sappy. of whom is one of my favorite screen presences and another who is my maybe my least favorite human being <laughs> ever, I think, potentially. Mike hates Nathan Fielder because he hates awkward comedy. Okay. So my number two pick, this is my favorite album of the year, um, the new Underscores album, Wall Socket. <laughs> really fun uh, hyper pop what no i just feel like what old people must feel like when their kids are telling them like band names and books and stuff oh yeah (laughs) when you talk anyway Anyway. awesome hyper pop uh it's got this like really cool digital production style she's um some really fun catchy hooks but also like some disturbingly raw and scary slant to the lyrics as well in some of the songs um, I don't think it's something that everyone would enjoy, but if that sounds, you know, you like, you like a little bit of daring in your music, I think you should check it out. It's really fun. Ooh, it's great. You're I think, daring, you I should. think you'd really like it, Wes. <laughs> Jeff, All I don't right, think you'd I'll like it very much. It. Yeah, probably not. Uh, okay. Number one. And actually. Number one, drum roll. For number two, I'm going to get rid of Succession. I'll put, I think you should leave season three in there because I forgot about it, but. I love okay. that show. And Tim Robinson is like my favorite funny person. Uh, <laughs> my number one was a football game me, Mike, and Wes just went to. Montana versus North Dakota State. And they won in it's a great double pick. overtime uh, on the two-point conversion. Formation. It's going to give to Nelson. Nelson looking for room. That's it! Montana! Out of the wall! That stadium is like the most beautiful stadium and the mountain was like all frosted and like foggy the whole game. And it was like, I think I, I mean, I told you guys in the moment, like, I think this is the coolest backdrop I've ever seen at a sporting event that I've been to. So like, it's just super cool. And now we're playing in a national championship. It was my favorite football game I've ever been to. I had so much fun. Yeah. That should have been on my list for sure. Pizza Hut, mini pizzas. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you are into Mike, those why don't, pizzas. why don't you go next? Okay. Uh, so my number one, this is my favorite 
piece of culture that came out this year is the new Super Mario Brothers Wonder. The new 2D side-scrolling Mario game. And I just had hmm. such a pleasant... It wasn't like a thrill-a-minute kind of experience because it's like a pretty simple, straightforward game. But um, yeah, it was just like a week and a half's worth of just feeling pleasant. Feel, feeling like we're back, you yeah. know? Mario's <laughs> back, baby. He had a good movie, pretty good movie this year. And the best game, in my opinion, that he's had in well over a decade. Um, good yeah, for you, and that Mario. includes Odyssey. I went there. A tiny pat I'll on go there. Back. I started playing that game. It, it is fun. I do like it. All right. My number one is the movie Talk to Me, um, directed by wow. the Philippu Brothers. Um, probably pronouncing their names wrong, but um, what was they had a YouTube, like Raka Raka, I think was their YouTube channel. But uh, I love a good horror movie, especially one that's original and not based off any existing IP. I saw this one also at the Sundance Film Festival, and I just don't think I've been that like viscerally affected by a movie in a very long time. Like I just felt waves of horror and fear and like fun. I just loved it. Like I just had such a good time and felt lost in it. I saw it again in theaters. I still really liked it, but it wasn't the exact same. But um, that first experience watching it just was probably my like number one media experience of the year. So I'm going with that. Nice. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> 